have your Bibles this morning, Philippians. We're going to start there. Uh, I want to I want to share something with you that God has just put upon my heart today. You know, God is God is just you know He deals. I I, I think I, I don't know maybe I just just whatever it is that God has put upon my heart and He deals with me just a little bit different. I guess it's hard for me to to make plans because seems as if the Lord is always, my, my plans are, are, are never His plans, <laughs> you know, we, we want to we wanna preach one way or say something, and, and the Lord just says, no, but I, I've got something to say myself, and, and so, you know, I, I always want to be obedient to what God has for us, and, and the leading and directing of His Spirit, and so Philippians uh, chapter 3, if you'd stand for the reading of God's Word, Finally, my brethren, verse 1, rejoice in the Lord, uh, rejoice in the Lord, to write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil works, beware of the concision, for we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in in the flesh. Though I must also, might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. I want you to, I want you to hear what Paul does right here. He, they, they've, they've almost pushed him to this. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews is touching the law of Pharisee. Verse 6. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those counted I lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith, and, and, and I want to put, stress this, through the faith of Christ. Not his faith. The faith of Christ. Where's Christ? Christ is in him. He says, through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that, if I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended of Christ Jesus." I want to lay hold of the high calling that God has put upon my life. I've, I've done everything and set everything aside and, and loosened every weight and, and the sin and, and all of those things. And, and, I, and I'm set on, on taking hold of the calling that God has placed upon my life. That's what he's saying. Lost everything that I might know him. I'm so moved by the word of God. And, and you know, we, we all have to come to grips that with the fact that God has created each one of us different. He has made us different and, and, and created us for a, a, a different purpose and a different calling. And, and yet sometimes what we do is we compare ourselves with one another. And, and we try to, we say to ourselves, if I'm not like so-and-so and if I can't do what they do, then, then what good I, I, am I and what good is is my calling and 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 I just don't feel like I'm useful and 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 other times we we can put so much confidence in the flesh that we need to be very very careful and and that's why Paul says that we don't put any trust in the flesh in verse 4 he says wherefore he might trust in the flesh. He, he, he doesn't want us to think of ourselves in the flesh. He says, though I might also have confidence 
in the flesh. And too many times, that's where our confidence comes from. As human beings, we plan our ways, we do our things, we set our agendas, and, and a lot of times what we're doing, and, and we got a little piece of this uh, yesterday in the leadership meeting, but we put our trust in our own plans, in our own thinkings, in our own flesh. Now, I, I want to give you just a little bit of, uh, of a scenario, if I could, this morning, and a little bit of history, if you would, uh, according to the, to the calling that Paul had upon his life and the calling that you and I have upon our life, because when we trust in the flesh, our flesh will ultimately lead us astray. And, I, and there's so much to be taken out of this, this passage of Scripture that we read. And there's going to be a lot that could be taken out of a lot of what we're going to say today. But, but I, for, the, for the sake of time, and, this is, and for, for the purpose that God has put this in my heart, I'm not going to go into all of the details. But Paul was saying, you have to put your trust in Christ in all things. Pursue the will of God. Do the things that Christ has called you to do. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Don't worry about what man is doing. Don't worry about all the other things that we worry and we get concerned with. But put your trust and your focus in Christ. But I, but I want to take you back because this is a very common thing, especially, and, and I want to bring this out, especially when we are not led by the Spirit of God. To, to not be led by the Spirit of God, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, is to, be, is to walk in the flesh. And you cannot do both today. You cannot do both. You can't walk in the Spirit and, and walk in the flesh at the same time. It's absolutely impossible. Those, those are on two different sides of the spectrum. They, they are completely different paradigms. To walk in the flesh and to walk in the spirit are completely different. And Paul said if we walk in the flesh, we will not, we cannot please God. And so therefore we have to learn to walk in the spirit. But I want to show you something because we get in trouble when we walk in the flesh. In Acts chapter 1, and I, and I want you to follow through with me and follow through the word of God with me. Because uh, we're, we're going somewhere this morning. I want to lay just a quick foundation and then we'll, we'll get on uh, into, into just the meat of it, if you would. Acts chapter 1. We see in Acts chapter 1 that God speaks to the apostles. He tells them to go into Jerusalem and, and, and to wait for the promise of the Father, he says in, in verse 4. Wait for the promise of the Father, which saith, is, which saith he, you have heard of me. Meaning, wait until you get baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to, just, just for a moment, if you would. He tells the disciples, what I want you to do is I don't want you to stop by the wayside. I don't want you going and, 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 and working any ministry at this point. I don't want you to do anything else. What I need you to do is I need you to adhere to what I tell you and to go into Jerusalem and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and here's, here's the thing. For you and I, this is an absolute we can't bypass this. Jesus commanded them just as he commands us today. Be filled with the Spirit. And that's another thing that I'm not going to be able to get into too much today because of, of the purpose for which we're, we're, we're talking and we're speaking today. So he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit and that's, and that's it. And he tells them, he, he tells them in 7 and 8, and I want you to hear it. And he saith unto them, it is not for you to know the times of the season which the Father has put in his own power, but, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you shall be witness of me both in Jerusalem, Judea, and in Samaria, and in the uttermost most parts of the earth. In other words, I want you to do one thing. I want you to get to Jerusalem and be filled with the Spirit. Every believer, after they, are, after they are, are saved, this ought to be the commandment for them. Be baptized, be filled with the Spirit. That, that's it. Be baptized and be filled with the Spirit. Don't stop along the way. Don't, don't try to sit and ask questions and, and try to go out on your own flesh and your own mind and do the things that you want to do because when we get in our own mind, we begin to make mistakes. In Acts, the, the same chapter, if you move over even from 15 to 26, and I'm not going to read it all, but here's the thing. 
What had happened was, if you remember, Judas Iscariot was, was one of the disciples, and he had betrayed Jesus, and so he had departed from the faith. And he went, he hung himself, and so, so the disciples come up with this thing. That wasn't there supposed to be 12 of us? And this is, isn't this, and you can look in verse 16, he says, which the Holy Ghost uh, by the mouth of David spoke concerning, uh, concerning Judas, when, uh, which was guide to them that, look, that, look, uh, that took Jesus. He, in other words, he led them to take Jesus, and Judas was the one who had forsaken Christ. And so they got this thing in their mind. And they said, what we need to do before we get to Jerusalem, before we're filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, while we're still operating in the flesh, we need to choose another disciple. Great idea, right? Wrong. But this is what we often do. You know what, God? It's, 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 it's been too long, and, and we're on our way, and we have good intentions, and this is something I know, I really believe that you want us to do, and so, so we're going to do the right thing. The Bible says that they even prayed, and they chose two of them, and they chose two of them, and, and, and they said, you know what? What we're going to do is we're going to cast lots, and, and you, can, you can see, but Peter was operating in the flesh. And they gave their lots, verse 26. And the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. And so operating under the flesh, the disciples came. Without, without looking to God's plan, the disciples came and decided to name another apostle. But, but here's the thing. This is the last place that you and I will ever hear of, of Matthias. And why? Because it was done in the flesh. Christ never told, said, no, now, now go and find another uh, apostle before you go and get filled with the Holy Spirit. And see, and this is what we do oftentimes, rather than seeking God, and, not, and I'm not just saying the first time that you're filled with the Holy Spirit, but the, that word being filled, it, it means being filled. It means a continual thing. So you and I have to operate in the Spirit at all times, or we're going to make some serious mistakes. And so it means that we have to always go to God before we make a decision. We always have to go before God and make it to, before we make a decision because God has other, uh, has other plans. In Isaiah 55 and 8, the Bible says that my thoughts are not your thoughts and, and my ways are not your ways, declares the Lord. Because my thoughts are higher. My ways are higher than yours. And all of this, it, 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 it's higher than what you are thinking. In other words, what we have to do is, is understand we have to receive the mind of Christ before we can go forward and do the work that Christ has called us to do. So Christ has a different plan. And if you will, turn with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. And I, and I want to go, you know, to see this, there's a... There's a reason. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. God had another plan. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'll go back just a couple verses, because here's Paul, and, and he's explaining what the apostles had seen, how they had seen Christ, how they were, how Christ was revealed unto them, and all of this. And, and in verse 6, he says, After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remaineth unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Now here it is. In verse 8, he says, and last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. And, and hear what he says, for I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But the grace of God, but, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. 
It wasn't my decision, it wasn't my choice, but it was by the grace of God. And we know the conversion of Paul that takes place in Acts chapter 9, where Paul is on his way to Damascus because he has received orders to to, to go ahead and, and persecute the church. And so along the road, Paul comes in confrontation uh, with with Jesus Christ and meets him along the road and the bright light shines and and Paul has this encounter and and it's the road to Damascus conversion of Paul. And so Paul comes to this understanding and he's realizing at this moment that he has been called to be an apostle of God. And, and, and so, so in, in, in Galatians, if you would, Galatians uh, chapter 1, because I want you to see this, because, because there were certain criteria that were set up so that they could be the apostles of God. And so Paul says this, and, 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 and here it is in Galatians chapter 1. He says, when it pleased God, in verse 15, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. And I want you to see, I, I, you, you have to see the intricate details of, of the working of God. Who, who, who knew me, who, who, who created me or separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach among him, uh, among the heathen, Immediately I conferred, and here, here it is, not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which are apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. So Paul says that something miraculous had taken place after his conversion. All of a sudden, he had come in and he had met Jesus Christ, and Christ had begun to teach him for three years by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, man had wanted one thing, but God had another plan. Man in the flesh had wanted to set up an apostle called, called, called Matthias, whereas God wanted an apostle called Paul. Paul met all the criteria that the disciples needed, to, that it needed to be an, an, an apostle of Jesus Christ. And the disciples were looking on the outward, and, and, and when we're walking in the flesh, we're constantly looking with our eyes rather than seeing things with our spirit. So Paul, during this time, was given an abundance of revelations through the, through, through the Spirit of God, and, and, and Paul knew, but, but, but here's the thing, Paul knew the Scriptures, because he said, even there, a Pharisee concerning the law, concerning the Scripture, a Pharisee of the Pharisees, meaning Paul knew the Scriptures, and here's something for you and I, those of us that, that think that it's unimportant, listen to me, you need to know the Scriptures, Because here's the thing, the Spirit of God has nothing to draw from if you do not get into the Word of God. There's there's no revelation without the Word of God. There's no revealing anything to you apart from the Word of God. The Bible tells us to study or to show ourselves approved. So so we need to know the word of God. So Paul knew the scriptures, but here's what the Holy Spirit was doing through Paul. He was revealing Paul, revealing himself to Paul through the revelation of the word that he had already possessed within him. But something begins to happen in Paul. See, Paul became confident, if you will, in his flesh. You see, God God always allows us uh, the, the freedom, if you will. God allows us the freedom to taste the word of God and to do with the word of God what we want to do with it. And see, sometimes we can get so confident in ourselves. Sometimes we have our plans and sometimes we, we put all of these things together. And, 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 and we build our own lives and, and we come to a place where, where, no, you can't tell me what to do. And, and we, we, we know exactly what God wants from us and what God is going to do in us and what God is going to do through us. Turn to, to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and we're going to stay here for the remainder of the service because here's where I wanted to get. 
In verse 11, Paul says, I am become a fool in glorying. You have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing I am behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. In other words, I'm an apostle just like the apostles, and in every area, shape, way, and form. In verse 12, he says, Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Paul is saying right here, you provoked me to, to brag and to become a fool. Because they, they, he had come to a place where the Corinthians and others had come into the church and said, said Paul, he speaks like this and he speaks like that, but he is no apostle. And so Paul begins to state all his, all his uh, claims and says, well, I, I, I'm, I'm an apostle of the apostles. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a you know, I, I've, I've got all the credentials. Uh, I was a Jew born circumcised on the eighth day, done everything, went through all the legal systems. And it's almost like he had to, he had to refer back to the flesh and then he had to go all the way back through it. And, and through the process, he had begun to, 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 to expound upon the revelations that God had given him. And so because of it all, Paul began to trust in the flesh at some point. And he said, I became a fool. And, and I want you to see this because, because we've all become fools at some point in some time. And sometimes we wonder, God, why am I going through what I'm going through? Can I tell you this? You're going through it because God is trying to teach you something. And God is bringing you to a place and me to a place. Well, we put absolutely no trust in the flesh at all. I, I, I don't know how many nights I've sat there and cried, not understanding that. Not understanding that what God is trying to do is he's trying to bring me to a place where I have full trust and reliance upon him and upon his spirit in me. I, I don't care who you are or what you are. I don't care how educated you think you are. I'm telling you, when God will bring you to a place where none of that will matter. It doesn't matter how educated you and I are, and Paul realized this, and he, he was, they, they say one of the most educated men, one of the six, of the, within the top six of the wisest men that ever walked the face of the earth. And you think about that, Jesus and Solomon being, there, being in there. And yet Paul understood something. If my mind goes, it doesn't matter how wise I think, I am. And this is the part where you and I have to learn something. And God is going to teach us something. Now Paul goes on through chapter 12. Now you, if you'll go back. And, and you can read for, through it for, with, for your own self. In, 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 in detail uh, this week maybe. As, as you take time in your own devotion. But I want to go back to verse 6. He says, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. He says, for I will say the, the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. See, Paul had come to an understanding because there were some things that had begun to uh, conspire in his life. And some of you are going to be brought into a place... Where God is going to reveal to you that you are not as great as you think you are. You are not in, in the place where you think you are. You don't hold the position that you think you hold. That ultimately God is in control of it all. He says in verse 7. He says, and least I should be exalted above measure. Through the abundance of revelation. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. Least I should be exalted above measure. 
See, Paul was here. He was called not of man, but he was called of God. And God revealed to him in those three years that that he had studied the scriptures, that he had been in the presence of God. God had given him an abundance of revelation. And you want to know the revelations that God had given him? Well, then, then you read through the book of Acts. You read all through the epistles. And you will find that God had given Paul revelations that had only come from him. Just like when God told Told Peter, he said, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but my spirit, my father, which is in heaven. And so, so, so what Paul did was, was he had become so, so, so engrossed in all of the revelations, man, he had all of this bottled up in him and he just wanted to pour it out and let everybody know about it. And, and, and in doing so, he was able to, to even, you know, confound even those that, that came against him, just like when Jesus, when they would come to attack Jesus, and, and Jesus, with, with just a couple of words, were, would turn it back on their head and, and would cause them to, to question and, and, and really think. And they would say, you know what, if we respond like this, then, then he'll say this. And if we respond like this, then he'll say this. And, and he's got us trapped in a corner. And Paul had become just like that. Why? Because Christ was living in him. But here's what happened, that, that because of all the revelation and everything that Paul had been given, there was a messenger of Satan sent to him to buffet him so that he would not exalt himself above measure. And, and I want you to hear this because some of you are right here. For this thing, besought, I besought the Lord three times that, he might de- that it might depart from me. Now the Bible doesn't tell us what it is for good reason. Because if it did, then you would say, well, that's never happened to me. Can I tell you this? We'll all have our thorn in the flesh. We will all have our thorn in the flesh. We will all have something in our lives that will be right there nagging us and keeping us, if you will, humble. Paul said, I've asked the Lord three times to take this from me, but he wouldn't. Verse 9, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you, for in my strength, for, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And I want you to hear what Paul says. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in the infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. So I want you to think about this just for a moment because there's so many people that are trusting, even at this moment, in their own understanding, in their own things. And, and here's the thing, and I, and I say this as a, as a warning, if you would, this morning. Because if you don't get this under control, it, it, it will, you will run into hard places. It's not to say that you're not going to run into hard places anyways. And, and I know that there's some that'll say you'll never have a hard place. No, you'll have hard places because it's in the hard places that you and I truly learn to depend upon Jesus Christ. But see, here's what God was saying is, I gave you the word, I gave you the revelation, and I will help you to carry it out and to do it. There's so many times where, where we, as I said, feel so inadequate and we feel insufficient for the job that God has called us to, into. And I believe that anyone who has been called into the ministry has gone, undergone this. God, what am I going to do? What, 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 are, you, what are you talking about? You know, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this. Only you do. But I can tell you this. There's a lot of people out there that know how to do it and they're doing it well and they're doing it in the flesh. Because they have not been brought to a place where, where, where they have come under that. And, and, and here's the thing. They will come under that eventually. If they continue to follow Christ, they're going to come under this. I can tell you this, that, that God did, allowed me to go through this. And there was a time in my life for, for nine months that God allowed me to go through something. And, and for me, it was something different than it might be for you. But for me, it was... It was I was, I was, I remember, um, I was on top of a building one morning and, and we were out working and I was in the construction field and, and, and 
all of a sudden, it was just, I, I'd never experienced anything like it in my life. I'd begin to have a panic attack right there, 30 some feet up in the air. I was there, my mind just, my mind just left. I didn't understand, didn't know what was going on. All of a sudden, everything was, 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 was just mixed up, and, and, and I thought, God, what in the world is happening to me? I'm a believer. I didn't, I didn't quite understand this yet because I was a young believer at the time. And I remember getting down, and, and it, was, it took all that I could do just to, just to get down from this building and climb down the ladder and, and, and sit there and walk on the, on the ground. I, I went to my brothers. They were there with me, and I said, I, I don't understand it. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on in my life. I said, I don't know. Something just happened, and I, and I, and I have no control over it. Everything was, was, was spinning in my head. It was as if somebody opened up every, every, every memory block that was in my head and every thought that I've ever thought just rushed in all at once. And one was running into the other and it was just, it was chaos. And so I, I remember at that time I began to, to pray and I began to pray and I said to my brother, I said, I just, you know, I, I was the one that drove the work truck, he drove his car and I said, I need your car so you all can stay here. I, I, I just need to go home. And so I remember driving home, and the whole way home, I'm praying. I get into my house, and I begin to pray some more. And, and I'm praying there before God. And, and I just, just find myself beginning to pray in the Spirit, because thank God I was filled with the Spirit at the time. And God was doing some awesome things in my life. And there were some things that he had begun to reveal to me, even as I was praying through these, through these years, through these few years that I had been saved. And, and, and he, was, he was doing some awesome things, and I would begin to receive a lot of these things. And, and I was sitting in my house, and, and all of that at that moment didn't matter. None of it. But I began to pray in the Spirit, and, and, and all of a sudden, as I began to pray in the Spirit, little by little, the peace began to return. But then, but then after a while, it would come back, and my mind would just leave me, and I'd lose it. And I remember getting on the phone and calling my, 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 my pastor's son. And I said, James, I said, if you're there, I said, I need you. I need you to come, and I need you to pray with me. And I told him what was going on. He said, you know what? I'll be right there. I think he left work that day and came, and he came over the house, and he just sat there in that, that house, and, we, and, I, and, and, and in that living room, we just, we just prayed and prayed. And, and I didn't understand what was going on, and there were things going through my mind, and I was, and I, and I was, I was literally going insane. And this happened day after day. And it happened day after day, and, and for nine months it happened. And I would just be anywhere in the world. I'd, I'd just be walking down. I'd be at work. I'd be going through the, through the grocery aisles. And, and, I, and I was sitting there, and, and, and in the middle of it, all of a sudden, Satan, that enemy, that messenger of Satan would come to buffet me. And, and so I began to pray again in the Spirit, and I knew that that was the only thing that seemed to help at the time was I'd begin to pray in the Spirit of God, and I'd speak in tongues. Wherever I was, I didn't care. I remember one time I was walking down a Winn-Dixie, down the aisle of a Winn-Dixie. You may not know that, but it's similar to an H-E-B around here. And I was walking through the aisle of that Winn-Dixie, and all of a sudden, that thing came on me. That, that foreboding fear had entered my mind. And I'm not saying that this is what Paul was going through. Paul's could have been different. It could have been the same thing. I don't know. But this was that messenger of Satan that came. And all of a sudden, right there in the middle of Winn-Dixie, I'm walking down the, the, the aisle and I began to speak in tongues where everybody could hear me. I didn't care what people said. My sanity was on the line. Through that time, I thought about going to the doctor. Now, I'm not, I don't have anything against a doctor. But I thought to myself, no, if I get on some kind of a pills, I'll never get off of them. And I began to put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, God, if you'll do this, you're going to do this. And it's going to be you that does this. And see, what God was teaching me is you can't trust in the flesh. If I started the story, I'll finish it. I called you, Paul, to be an apostle. And I'll finish the work that I started in you if you'll let me. And the moment you begin to take control, I'll step in. And I'll begin to reveal to you who's in charge. 
And so I began to pray through these nine months, and God was teaching me to put my trust in him and no one else. Not to put my trust in what I've learned and what I've understood and what I've come into, but to put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me give you just a couple of scriptures for somebody that may be going through something similar. 2 Timothy 1.7 was a scripture that I held to. I remember coming across that scripture, 2 Timothy 1.7, For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. I remember I would quote that. God, you haven't given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. God, this is not, this is not right. This is not the right. This is not what it's supposed to be like. You've given me a sound mind. Can I tell you, he has given you a sound mind. He's given me a sound mind, but it looks different to you than, 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 than what you think it is. And, and, I, and I want to point this out to you if, if, if I can. You see, you and I have to learn something, and he's going to teach us along the way through the process. So, so Paul comes to him and says, this messenger of Satan had come, and, and he said to me, I, I asked him three times, he said, no way, Paul. I'm not taking it from you. I ask Christ over and over and over again, take this from me. And it was as if he was responding back to me. My grace is sufficient for you. Why? I want you to be dependent upon me. Not dependent upon your flesh. See, Paul Paul had it all going for him. Paul had prestige, he had power, he had it all before he came to know Jesus Christ. He had money, he had it all. He had position, he had title, he had everything. You see, when Paul came to the understanding of this, this is when he goes back and he says, I've lost it all and I count it but dung that I may know Christ. And so God had begun to speak to me. And I still held on to that. You haven't given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. It wasn't until later that I had to learn this. But God had begun to show me something. And and, and I want to show it to you real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Because here's the thing. You say that will never happen to me. Be careful. Be careful. You see, God was teaching Paul, just as he was teaching myself, just as he has been teaching some of you, that if you're going to continue in this work, you're going to have to depend on me, not 50%, not 75%, not 99.9%. You're going to have to depend upon me 100%. I didn't learn this until later. But here's what God says. And and what Paul, what was revealed to Paul. And I believe because it was all through the process that, that Paul had gone through it. And he had faced all of this. And he had begun to realize that it was Christ in him. It was Christ being glorified in him. But here's what Paul says. He says in verse, tw- in verse 12, Now we have received the Spirit, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, for that we might know the things of God that are freely given to us. Now, now here's what Paul is saying. You and I have received the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is the mind of God. And, 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 and you, you have to see this. He says, because who knows the, the heart of a man except the spirit of the man? And we have the spirit of Christ in us. And now listen what he says in verse 16. For, we, for, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. And so Paul had to come to this place and hear me so that he could obtain the mind of Christ. I've explained it in this manner and in this sense, if you would. And this is the only way that God has shown it to me. And I pray that you would hear and that you would listen. I had to learn what it was to switch from my mind to the mind of Christ. 
You say, I'm not following you, pastor. You're not following me? We could do this all day. Go with me to Philippians. Philippians chapter one, I want you to see something. Paul says this in verse 20, and I, and I know, don't worry about the time. He said, according to the earnest expectation in verse 20, and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death, for me to live, somebody say it with me, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. See, Paul understood something. He said, for me to live is for Christ to live. Paul says in another place, the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Here's the thing. You and I have to learn to live the life of another. You and I have to learn to die to ourself, and this is that process, so that we can live unto Christ. See, God needed us a body. He needs a body to which he can fill and which he can live and breathe and speak through. But if my flesh is in control, then he doesn't have control over this body. And see, so I have to learn to walk in the Spirit so that I can have the mind of Christ so that I can overcome. And this is why Paul says, I would rather glory in these things. Why? Because when my flesh is weak, then the Spirit of God in God in me is strong and it is, is alive and well in me. And see, and this is what we, we always struggle with because it's the struggle especially of a young man and a young woman. And I'm not saying that that excludes us as older people. Trust me, some of us, we don't, we don't learn this lesson until we get older. But here's the thing. It's the struggle of giving up my will so that I can have his. And it's not until God knows he has you where he wants you that he is willing to release into you something greater. And so he brings us, you and I, to a place where he is in control. I remember towards the end of those, you can come, Julio, towards the end of those nine months, I remember reading 2 Timothy 1.12, where Paul says, I know in whom I believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know in whom I believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. And, and here's, here's what Paul had understood. He came to the place where he had put his complete trust and confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. That in following Christ, Christ would keep him. Now, now this, doesn't, this doesn't excuse your sin in any way. If you want to get out and you want to walk away from Christ, then you have all, all the right to do so. But see, Paul, this was a process for him, and he had learned it. I remember towards the end of that nine months, I remember looking and saying to God, because I was tired, I was in, in, in the flesh, I was, I was tired of fighting, I was tired of facing, I was tired of it all. And let me speak to those who, who, who are, are struggling, if you would, just for a moment. For those who are struggling in any way in their mind today. You struggle with depression. You struggle with, with, with just thoughts of suicide. You struggle with thoughts of inferiority. You, you struggle with these things. You, you don't know. You don't know and understand. You don't think you can go on any further. You're going to have to learn this secret. You're going to have to learn this secret. You 
See, Paul understood something, and, and I had come to that place, and I said, God, I can't do it anymore. I'm, I'm weak. My flesh, was, my flesh was being destroyed little by little. But it was for the glory and the honor of God. I didn't realize that until later. But my flesh was being destroyed little by little, and God was breaking me down. Because here's the thing, God can't do anything in you until he brings you to nothing. You, you will get frustrated in your purpose and in your pursuit of the things of God. He will bring you to the place of giving up. As long as you're doing it in your own strength. You can sit here today and you can, you can, you can say, well, that's not me and, and that's not me. Listen to me. You can fool yourself and you may be able to fool others, but you're not fooling God. And I remember on that day, I looked at God and I said, God, I said, I can't do this anymore. And I quoted that scripture, 2 Timothy 1.12. Because through that nine months, God had shown himself so gracious, so merciful, so powerful on my behalf. And, 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 and I looked at heaven and I said, God, I, I can't do this anymore. And I said, I commit my mind and my spirit to you today. I'm not fighting anymore. Because I was still fighting in the flesh at that time. I was still trying to figure things out. I was still trying to, to figure out how do I overcome this in my own strength. God was saying, you're never going to be able to do it in your own strength. But some of us are hard-headed. So I said, God, I can't do this in my own strength anymore. And, I, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm just, I'm giving up. Not on life. I said, I'm just giving up. I'm not trying anymore. And, and I remember praying this prayer. I said, God, if, if I find myself in an insane asylum one day, because I was given up in the flesh, I said, just promise me one thing. Promise me that you will remember me when you come back for your children and not leave me there. Just promise me you won't leave me there. And I said, I know in whom I believed. And I am persuaded, confident, that you are able to keep me, no matter what happens, against that day. And it was that moment I released and I let go. And it was that moment where God was saying, that's what I've been waiting. I've been waiting for it. been waiting for it and seeing there's been several occasion along the way where God brings me back to remember that and it wasn't about to about six months later that I remember looking back on that time and and it was like I got to look back on that picture of the sand the footprints in the sand and, and I remembered those times where God was so close to me when, when I had nothing else to lose and, and, and nothing else to give. And, and, and I remember praying, at, it, and it was about six months out of it where God had delivered me. From that, from that day, he delivered me. And I remember thinking, God, I'd be willing to go back into that if, if, if I could feel your presence like that. What does Paul say? What does he say? He said, I'd rather glory in persecutions. I'd rather glory in sufferings. I'd rather glory in all of these things. Because when I was weak, that's when I felt your strength the most. When I was vulnerable, when I stopped trusting in myself, when I stopped thinking that I had it all together, when I stopped operating in the flesh and I trusted in you, I never felt more freedom. And seeing some of you are here today, and, and, and you're, you're saying, I, I identify, Pastor, and I'm struggling with that even right now. And what God is saying is, is I want to meet you. But you have to be willing to cast that on me.